I'm Small Fry. Today I'll be teaching you some basics about TV paint as well as a brief tutorial. First things first, how do I even get TV paint? Go to their website, www.tvpaint.com, and on the left side, click Store. Click on the Quotes or Price List tab to see the various versions of TV paint and how much they cost. Just choose your country from the drop down menu and it'll give you a price conversion. Now I know what you're thinking. Holy cannoli, TV paint is so expensive. This is true, but let's go over some pros and cons. Pro, there is a trial version so you can test it out and if you don't like it, then no harm done. Con, TV paint is expensive. Pro, you can make some amazing work with TV paint like all of these films. Con, TV paint is typically not industry standard in America. Pro, I'm a freelance animator and I use TV paint for a lot of my freelance work and it still makes me money. There are a few different licenses for TV paint such as Pro, Standard, and Student. Just pick the one that you think fits your workflow best. Here's another pro, it's a one-time payment versus a subscription service like Adobe Creative Cloud. If my math is right, one purchase of TV Paint Pro is equal to a little over two years of Adobe Creative Cloud. Installation. There's a super handy installation guide on their website, which I will link for you in the description below. But the basic idea of it is, log into your account, click the program you purchased from your available downloads, click on the link provided to get an email with your unlock code, download the program, open TV Paint, and enter your unlock code. You will also get a ding dang dongle that will be physically mailed to you. Small fright, what the frick frack is a dongle? Well, let me tell you. It's a USB device about the size of a flash drive and whenever you wanna use TV Paint, you have to have the dongle plugged in. You can have TV Paint on as many computers as you want, but the only way to actually use the program is with your dongle. That being said, don't lose your dongle, ever. If you lose the dongle, you gotta repurchase your license. That's why I put a bell and bright tape on my dongle. Don't be an irresponsible dongle parent. Time for the tutorial. Go ahead and click File, New Project. Choose your specs. Typical widescreen dimensions are 1920 by 1080, but if you're doing Snapchat or Instagram story stuff, it's gonna be 1080 by 1920. Typical frame rate is 24 frames per second, but I've also seen 30 be used a lot. And the good news is if you want to change these settings at any time, you totally can. Ta-da! Here is your project. This right here is the stage where all your art will go. This is the timeline where all your frames and layers live. The color panel where you, well, you, you pick your colors. You can also click the tab and change your color picker thing. I usually stick with classic color picker. The main panel houses all your various settings and your tools. We have the brush tool, line tool, shape tools, curved line tool, fill bucket, magic wand, select tool, zoom, crop, transform and pan, camera, death button, it just erases your stage, um, and other tools that I don't really ever use. You can click and hold on any of these to see more options. Now for animation, the brush tool is gonna be your best friend. It's got a couple different modes. Pen tool is my personal favorite. There's eraser, pencil, fancier brush options. I only really use the first three, but if I get custom brushes off the internet, they would fall under the custom brush tool. These buttons change the size, opacity, power, and some extra settings. You can change the properties of these settings by clicking the diagonal triangle thing. My settings are set size to pressure, which means the size of the brush depends on how much pressure I use. I keep my power at constant, so I always have a saturated line. Here's our timeline. The white box is a frame, or TV Paint calls them instances. Once you start drawing on your stage, these frames will act as little tiny baby thumbnails, which is pretty neat. Here you can toggle your visibility, you can lock your layer, there's a light table, which I'll get to in a little bit. You can preserve transparency and toggle stencils. Let's say I draw a circle. Now, a few frames down, I decide mm, I don't really like that line and I wanna change it. If I draw farther down the timeline, it makes a new keyframe. The frames before this are totally unchanged. If you wanna edit a frame, you always have to start at the beginning of that frame. It's the same thing for clearing a keyframe. If you press delete down the timeline, it'll just clear that keyframe from where you press delete on. So if you wanted to delete the entire stretch of that frame, you would have to delete from the beginning. 
So I kind of like this circle. I want them to stay for a few more frames. So what I'm going to do is I will click the tiny gray square on my keyframe and I will drag it as far as I want. I can stretch or shrink it by dragging this tiny baby gray square. So we have mastered the brush and the timeline. Let's get to animating. My masterpiece for this tutorial is going to be called Party Puppy. We are going to need a layer for the background and a layer for the animation. I have the latest update of TV Paint as of July 2019, so I'll go over a few ways to do this in case your version doesn't have these settings. We can click New Background Layer to make a background that will be behind our animation layer. Background layers are green and they will stay constant through your entire animation without having to click and stretch out those keyframes. Fun fact, you can make any layer last the entire composition by clicking the little symbol next to your last keyframe and selecting the hold option. If you click none, it makes your animation end after the last keyframe. Loop repeats the animation from the first keyframe after it hits the last keyframe. It loops. Ping pong, I'm not really sure what that does. I've never used it. And hold keeps your layer constant until the end of the scene. So thanks to TV Paint, our background layer is held automatically for us. If you don't have the option to make a background layer like this, just click new and select anim or regular layer and drag it underneath your animation layer. For our background layer, I want Party Puppy to be having a great time outside, so let's draw a ground with some grass. We can go to our fill bucket tool, choose a color, and fill our background. In my fill bucket settings, I like to make my expand at one, and what that does is fill the space but also expand the color by one pixel, I think? It just makes sure that we don't have any space between the line art and the color. So now that the background layer is done, we're going to select our animation layer and start drawing. I'm also going to bring the opacity of our background layer down using this slider right here. Let's select the brush and draw the first frame of our party puppy. Woo! Alright, he looks great! Let's go make our next keyframe. Making a blank keyframe and... Oh, dang. Party puppy's gone, and I've already forgotten what he looks like. Frick. Not to fear, we can see the last frame using our light table, aka onion skinning. We just click the light bulb over here and select light table parameters to bring up the window. To turn on the light table for our layer, we just toggle the button underneath the light bulb on our selected layer. Ta-da! Party puppy lives on! We can scroll through our timeline and see that on our blank keyframe, he's a faded version of himself. Too much party and he'll do that to you. The light table window looks pretty confusing, right? It's actually pretty simple once you take a look at it. Zero represents our current frame. The numbers one to 10 going to the left of the zero are all our frames before the current frame. One to 10 going to the right of the zero are the future frames. If the number is highlighted, it means the light table is turned on for that future or past frame. You can see up to 10 frames before or after your current frame. I recommend keeping it at three or under because otherwise it just gets really confusing. You can change the color of your light table layers by clicking the colored box. It'll turn your mouse into a color selecting tool. Just move your mouse around the screen and you can see the box change color and you can select whatever color you want. So taking what we've learned, I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of the frames. Woo! We have all our animation frames done. We can play back our masterpiece by pressing spacebar or clicking the play button underneath the stage. Nice moves, party puppy. Let's take it one step further. Let's make a new animation layer and give him a party hat. Boop! Here's a party hat for ya. I'm going to turn off the light table for Party Puppy's layer, and I'm going to turn it on for the hat layer. Alright, Party Puppy's really rocking that hat. Now that my animation is complete, I want to throw some color in. For the latest version of TV Paint, I can make a color and texture layer. Make sure that you have the layer you want colored selected, then click New, Color and Texture Layer. The color and texture layer will be orange and have the same division of keyframes as the linked line art layer. These two layers are linked, which means I can draw a line anywhere inside my line art and the color and texture layer will automatically fill that space. All the color and texture layer can do is fill and erase, as you can see in the tool settings. I can go into more detail about coloring with the color and texture layer in another video if you guys are interested. Just leave a comment down below. 
Now, if your version of TV Paint doesn't have color and texture layers, I'm gonna show you my alternative. What I do is I select my line art layer, right click and hit duplicate layer. The bottom duplicated line art will serve as my color layer because I can just fill bucket the line art and retain the lines I drew with the top line art layer. So I've duplicated my layers, I'll select my fill bucket, set my expand to one or two and start filling in my line art. Once I'm done coloring, I click and drag the top line art layer down on top of my colored line art. This is because I want to merge my layers. So I click, drag, and let go, and this window pops up and gives me my merge options. I always check erase source so that it becomes one merged layer. So I've done that, and I'm going to do the same thing with Party Puppy's hat. Okay, that's all finished. Let's press play and check out our work. He's so cute. Look at him dancing. Now, I want to share this little boy with the world, so I'm going to export my work. Click File, Export To. You can see your work in the preview window on the right. Click Browse to choose where you're saving your file. In the As section, you'll want animation selected. If you choose single image, it's only going to export the frame that you're currently on. Useful sometimes, but not right now. Format. You have a ton of options here. My main ones are MOV, AVI, and GIF. For this project, let's select RGB. If your project has a transparent background and you wanted to export it that way, you would pick RGBA to preserve that alpha channel. These are your project specs that we picked in the beginning. You don't really need to change those. Click and drag the slider to scrub through and make sure your animation looks tip top. If it all looks good, just go ahead and click export. So that is just a peek into TV Paint and all the magic this program can do. If you thought this video was helpful and you learned something, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear your opinion. If you like this video, make sure to let me know by clicking that like button. If you guys are interested, I can dissect some scenes from my film or other animation that I've done, and I can show you how I use the program to make my work. If you're into that, just let me know with a comment. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye!